before you watch the video, please make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications if you want to watch more of my videos and that you don't want to miss out on. And if you want to follow my social media, check out my literature, art, and comics. All links will be down in the description below. Try Our Milkshake Written by Thusk The hostess led us to our table, the waiter took our orders, and soon enough Richard, Denise, and I started dinner. The conversation was pleasant, if largely vacuous. I don't remember the details, and I suppose they don't matter. I just remember watching Denise bite into her chicken sandwich. Her teeth made a faint squishing noise as they dug in. Grease and ranch dressing mixed together into a white pus-like goo that oozed down the sides of her mouth. I turned to Richard. He was dipping his fries in the ketchup, swirling them around, smooshing them in deeper and deeper till they formed a bloody paste on his fingertips. Denise laughed at a joke I must have made. It was a combination shriek and gurgle. I could see a lump of partially chewed food stuck to the back of her tongue. The liquid running down her mouth congealed on the tip of her chin, swelling up into droplets that broke free and plummeted to the plate below. Soon enough, dinner was over. We split the check and I headed home. I know that we were all friends at some point, maybe in, in school, the why escapes me. Time moves on, I suppose, and so do people. Really, Denise and Richard were nice enough. I guess that makes me the jerk which might explain why they had each other and I came home to an empty house. I watched some TV, brushed my teeth, and went to bed, ready to start the great cycle again tomorrow. About two months later, Richard gave me a call. After some dull catching up, we made plans for another evening get-together. This time, though, Richard had something else in mind. A friend of theirs had recommended an obscure diner a little ways out of town. A bit of a drive, but apparently amazing. Provided you don't mind heartburn. It seemed like a lot of trouble, but for what of any plausible way to excuse myself, I agreed to meet them there. I could hear gravel crunch under my car wheels as I pulled into the parking lot. The location was rustic, but thinking about it now, I can't say anything seemed sinister. There weren't many cars, but then again, we were a little ways off the beaten path. Richard and Denise must have seen me pull up as they were already walking over to my car. We exchanged the usual greetings, then headed inside. The place was nice, unremarkable, but cozy. Even the neon beer sign in the window was charming in its own way. On the wall behind the cash register, hung a large blackboard with the daily specials written on it. At the bottom, it read, Try Our Milkshake. We milled around in front of the Please Wait to Be Seated sign until a girl in a black t-shirt 
An apron stepped out of the back. She walked over and told us to sit anywhere we like, and she would be with us in just a minute. Sure enough, a minute later, she came back with three menus and three glasses of water. Making small talk, Richard commented that it must have been a slow night. Our waitress, Stacy, agreed. She told us they actually did more business on weekday mornings than on the weekends, which made sense. Weekends are for fancy dinners in the big city, after all. Already I could feel the predictable banality of the evening set in. I was sure at any moment the conversation would shift to the weather. Beautiful weather, though. Great night to get out. Denise chimed in as destiny asserted itself. Stacy nodded and smiled and caught a glimpse of her teeth. They were green. She could have just finished eating a salad, I guess, and yet I couldn't stop the word gangrene from popping into my head. A terrible thought, but it faded quickly. Stacy went off to place our order while Denise, Richard, and I begun our ritualized process of catching up on recent events. The food came, and it was good. Not as amazing as Richard's friend had claimed, but tasty enough to take my mind off of my own petty concerns. Finished, Richard wiped his mouth and said, I think I'm gonna take that sign's advice and get a milkshake. He was decisive, and when Stacy came back, we all ordered one. Oh, you're gonna love it, she said smiling wide enough for a prolonged view of the green plaque crusted around her teeth. That definitely wasn't salad. A few minutes later, Stacy was back with our milkshakes. Now, I'm not exaggerating when I say they were amazing. In fact, they were the best milkshakes I ever had. The best food, period. Keep that in mind, because for the Briefest moment, the flavor on the tip of my tongue was of rancid milk, maybe even worse, although I have no idea what a rotting corpse tastes like. But in an instant, that sensation was forgotten, lost in an ocean of delicious creamy goodness. Denise and Richard were enraptured too and it was getting difficult to concentrate. Time started to malfunction. We didn't speak. We didn't look at each other. We barely even breathed as we kept sucking down our drinks. I must have had enough awareness, though, to spot Stacy out of the corner of my eye. She was standing there, swaying slightly, gaping at us with a dead look on her face. Maybe it was the light, or maybe it was my haze. But I swear more of that green mold had spread over her into the hairline and over her lips. Her eyes were yellow and wet. Ridger's straw made a harsh sucking noise as he vacuumed up the last drops of shake from his glass. He raised his head, and the expression on his face was both confused and feral. Another, he said, sputtering out milk as he spoke. Stacy twitched out a nod of confirmation, waddling off to the kitchen. I looked over Denise, her blouse was moist with little spray bits of whipped cream and sprinkles stuck to it. She seemed dazed, frightened, a horrified prisoner of her own culinary delight. 
Shortly, Stacy returned with another round of milkshakes. Then another, and another. Time became as blended as and shapeless as the milkshakes themselves. I had no idea how long we sat there, or how many shakes we had. I remember Richard laughing like a lunatic when a blood vessel burst in Stacy's eye, filling it up with a web of red veins. Later, Denise started screaming for no apparent reason. The vibrato of her throat caused the milk welling up in it to bubble as it poured out over her chin. Everything on the table was covered in milk, so were Richard and Denise. So was I. It was on our hands, in our hair, in our eyes. It began to pile up, solidifying into white mounds of quivering ooze. As I lifted my glass into my mouth, Strings of sticky milk stretched out from my arm to the table, studded with colored sprinkles and melted chocolate chips. Chunks of white foam sloughed off Richard's mouth as he said, Look, I gotta ask, how do you make these milkshakes, Zeb? They're the best thing I ever had in my whole life. Who is Zeb? That's a question I would have asked myself if I had had any capability for rational thought. I only know that Zeb had been chatting with us for some time. I assumed he ran the place. He was very friendly, like a giant pile of middle-aged sausage with a thick meaty hands and a smile that stretched open as wide as a slit throat. While Rick, Zeb answered, why don't I show ya? Seeing is believing, like my pastor used to say. Zeb reached down with his chunky ham fingers and started unbuttoning his shirt. We all watched fixated. As he worked his way down, Zeb smiled. Grease poured out of his mouth, moistening his meaty lips. You see, folks, the secret ingredient is love, Zeb said, as he undid the last button and pulled his shirt open. His miss section was a giant maggot with stumpy fat legs grasping at the air, curling in and out like a newborn baby with too many limbs. The tip of each leg ended in a little black nipple with a drizzle of milky liquid trickling out. If you want the full experience, Zeb continued, it's best to go right to a source. He emphasized his point by gently squeezing one of the grummy limbs. A stream of goo shot out in an arc. Despite the cloud that still hung over my mind, the utter horror of the situation started to creep in. Fear and revulsion began to slowly pull me back to my senses, still, I couldn't bring myself to move or scream. I sat there, glued to the table in a cocoon of white sludge. Denise was completely gone, I could see. Pure terror was plastered over her face, milk pouring out of her mouth like a pitcher overflowing with water. For the, his part, Richard was fascinated. He looked hungry, gazing at the bloated worm thing that was Zeb's torso. Zeb eyed Richard and smiled. You like that, don't you? 
Richard crept towards them, bending down until his face was level with one of the flabby little legs. He wrapped his legs around the nub and started sucking. The image reminded me of kittens nestled up against their mother tummy while she feeds them, but awful and with humanoid grub worms instead. We got a happy customer here, Zeb said to Stacy, who was now completely tilted green and started to grow patches of moss over her body. Richard's belly began to swell, forcing its way out from underneath his shirt. Bumps started to form on his skin, drawing up so tightly that the flesh on each blister stretched out to a translucent membrane. One by one, they popped open, revealing little compound eyes that darted back and forth. The back of his shirt jumped. Something underneath was punching upward. After several violent thrusts, two growths tore through the fabric. A ride scent fly wings unfolded from Richard's back, glistening in the light. Holy cow, Zeb said. He's an angel. Richard pulled his face away from Zeb's chest. It was a visage of pure instinct Tracy. Caked in a layer of creamy white slime, his newly formed wings fluttered in quick bursts of what I can only assume was pleasure. Then I noticed that Stacy had moved back to the kitchen, which now was somehow fully visible. She wrapped the gangrenous tendrils that were once her fingers around the freezer's door handle and swung it open. It was a meat locker. No bigger, much bigger. There was an entire meat packing plant in there. I saw row after row of bloody carcasses all strung up on hooks. There was more than one floor even. It was a cathedral of slaughter, packed with slabs of dripping meat of all different shapes and sizes as far as the eye could see, stretching back until they disappeared into the pink haze that illuminated the expanse. Go on now, Angel, Zeb said to the bug thing Richard had become. Fly on up to heaven. And so Richard took flight Buzzing filled the air as he lifted his bloated body off the ground. He hovered above the table for a minute, turning his insectoid glaze to us. Best dinner I ever had, Richard told us before flying in a zigzag pattern toward the open wound that was the freezer door. Richard soared up into the lofty heights above, bobbing in between the rows of dangling meat. He was just like a little fly, about to settle on a freshly rotten corpse. Then he froze in midair. A massive shape began to fill the luminous void at the back of the freezer. It surged forward, engulfing everything in its dark crimson bulk. I think it was a gargantuan worm-like tongue, and as it thrust toward Richard's helpless form, it opened up, unfurling into a gaping mouth studded with a bouquet of vast twitching fangs. Richard vanished into the black hole of its gullet, and in that instant I finally managed to scream. So did Denise and I don't think she ever stopped from that point on. I thrashed violently, struggling to disentangle myself from the wet web sticking my body to the chair. That's when I noticed there was a pig sitting at the table next to ours. 
It had a fork and it was eating itself. The pig smiled at me and said, Try the pork, Bob. It's delicious. My name isn't Bob. And even stricken with abject terror, I recognized the futility of arguing with a demonic pig. All that revulsion, the abominations, and the sheer impossibility of the night suddenly stuck in my guts, swelling upward into my chest, welling up in my throat until I could didn't take it any longer and started vomiting violently. A geyser of white milk shot out of my mouth, cascading to the floor and pulling up around my feet. Zeb looked at me and said, Huh, maybe you're lactose intolerant. I fell forward, caught in midair by the few strands of webbing that still held me. For a moment, I hovered there, exhausted, looking down at half-digested sprinkles and gummy bears floating in the sea of bile and milk I had just produced. Then the webs gave away, and I crashed to the floor, making a splash as I landed. The shock knocked me back to my senses. The full way of the danger dawned on me. Panic struck. I frilled around, fighting to get my footing. Zeb saw me struggle and stood up. Hold on there, fella. I'm coming. He reached out with one of his big meaty hands as he drew closer. As he leaned in, the maggot in his torso spasmed with anticipation. I'm not sure if I meant to kick Zeb, but I did. My foot struck his knee, making a squishy splat noise as it landed. He stumbled backwards from the blow, slipping on the liquid coating the floor as he toppled into his back. Zeb let out a sharp squeal. The fall must have taken the wind out of him because he didn't move. The worm that was his stomach did though, its fat little limbs grasping at the air helplessly. Finally, my strength came back. My sense of reality returned. I felt better all of a sudden and managed to hoist myself off the floor. I didn't bother to even look at them. I just turned and ran to the front door as fast as I could. The vaguely humanoid pile of spinach that Stacy had turned into shouted from behind me, the milkshakes are on the house. I shot through the door and felt the cleansing night air on my skin. I ran straight to my car, got in, and drove off. Everything was a blur. I couldn't think, couldn't make sense of anything. Terror slowly gave way to relief. Tinged. With a lingering unease, revolting thoughts tugged at the corners of my mind. Fortunately, I managed to keep them from seeping back in, mostly. A full day had gone by before I remembered Denise. I left her there, didn't even give second thought to save her. I doubt there was much I could have done anyhow. Still, poor Denise. Oh well. I've been surprised at how little leaving her behind has bothered me. Time moves on, and so do people, I guess. I do get nightmares occasionally. Now and then, a disembodied sense of sickness creeps over me for the most part, though. I've gotten on with my life. I can't say for certain how real any of this was. I mean, Richard and Denise were real, and they are missing. But I know I wasn't in my right mind that night. Something happened, though. A year later, I finally mustered the courage to drive back to the place. Nothing was there. No restaurant, 
no parking lot, no indication there was ever even a building there. Richard never mentioned the name of his friend who recommended the diner. So that's a dead end. Not that I'm eager to find it, but who knows? Maybe you will. If you do, take my advice. Don't try the milkshake.